So now we are going to explore texture through printmaking and printmaking is a type of art that can be created many, many different ways, but we're going to explore collagraph prints. And so we're gonna discuss what that is right now. So I've um, already put an example collagraph print right here on the screen. It's just a piece of cardboard um, with some yarn, some bubble wrap and some other things to create texture. But we'll talk about what a collagraph is, how you can make it and what it does on the next few slides. So what is a collagraph print? A collagraph print is a printmaking process introduced in 1955 where materials are applied to a rigid surface like a piece of paperboard or wood. So you start with a piece that is flat and sturdy and then you apply different things on top of it um, to create a print. And in printmaking, you're essentially just making a stamp, okay? So we're going to start with a piece of tag board, which is kind of like a piece of cardboard, but thinner and flat. It doesn't have like the grooves inside of it. And then we're gonna apply more cardboard, yarn, and maybe even a little bit of bubble wrap on it to create collagraphs. So, like I said, we're gonna create what's almost like a stamp. And for our project, we're gonna be rolling our plates with black acrylic paint and then stamping it onto our collage background. So we discussed how we're kind of making like an MMS themed project. So our collagraph is going to be bullpup related. So let's look at some collagraph examples. Here's an example of a collagraph made from mostly cardboard, all right? Now I'm gonna be honest, I don't really know what this stuff is right here, but the background of their collagraph is a piece of cardboard. And then this is a piece of cardboard that's been cut. This looks like maybe some yarn, buttons, and then maybe like some fabric that they used. And then they rolled some um, ink or some paint over the top and they stamped it onto this white, white piece of paper. And that's where you're seeing the finished product, product right there. So here's another example of a collagraph. Um, they used a piece of tag board for the background. Then for the body of this person, it looks like they used some bubble wrap maybe applied on some cardboard. We have a zipper at the bottom. We have some more buttons, some more cut cardboard, and then they rolled it and stamped it. And lastly, here's just a simple little outline example of a piece of tag board on the background. And then we have some more tag board cut for the top and then they inked it and stamped it to create this bird. So we're gonna kind of discuss right now um, how we're going to create our collagraph, what our collagraph is gonna look like and the materials that you'll be using today. All right, so I have all the materials that I need to make in my collagraph. We're gonna start by making a paw print. So I have some yarn, you guys have a pencil. I actually can't find a pencil, so I have a pen right now. You're gonna have a glue bottle. You might use some bubble wrap, some scissors, and then your tag board. So you're gonna have a nine by 12 piece of tag board. I encourage you to write your name on the back before you start, just in case it gets misplaced and everyone's making the same thing. So you don't want to lose it or for somebody else to find yours and then we have an argument about whose is whose. So I'm gonna start on this surface by drawing a paw print. Okay, now you're gonna do this with pencil. The nice thing about this is, is that if you mess up on this um, and you have to erase over and over, then it's not a big deal because we are gonna cover it up and we are just going to print on it, but I'm just gonna draw like a simple paw print shape. So I'm actually gonna start and I'm gonna draw like almost like a V shape. And you're thinking, what in the world are you doing? Okay, and I'm just kind of sketching this just to get like a rough, idea of what I'm doing and then I'm going to kind of curve them together and you're still wondering what is she doing. So I'll show you here in just a second. Okay, this is going to be kind of the bottom of my paw print. If you don't like how I'm drawing mine and you want to draw yours a different way, I'm not offended. You draw it however you want. Okay, so there's the bottom of my paw print and then I'm going to add four pads at the top. Okay, so it is important that your design fits on your piece of tag board. You don't want any going off. Okay, so there's mine. And then if you decide that there's anything you want to adjust, then you can adjust them. So looking at this now, I'm thinking, mm, this might be too skinny for what I'm doing. So I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger at the bottom. 
okay? So I know that this surface, and you don't need to do this, I'm just doing this to show you. This surface that I just drew is what I need to create my textures on, right? So that's my paw print. All right, so now I'm ready to start. I just kind of colored it in so that you knew, okay, this is where we need to build stuff. All right, so now the materials that I have are I have like tag board, I have yarn, and I have bubble wrap that I can glue onto these surfaces. So I'm actually just going to start with yarn. And, you know, we are already familiar with this because we did this on our line project. But you can do anything you want with the yarn. You can create kind of a texture if you want. You can... Um, you can create a design if you want. You could spell out a word like MMS. Don't just be writing random stuff though, that would be weird. So I'm gonna start with, I'm actually going to start, I think, and I'm going to create a line of glue all the way around my paw print base. Sorry, my glue bottle is kind of clogged up a little bit. So I'm gonna start there, I think. And I'm going to set one long piece of yarn all the way around the outside. And why I decided to do that is because then I think it will give me a nice shape to start with. So that when I make my print, you're definitely going to know that it's a paw print, right? Because it has that, has that outline. So if you remember when we did our yarn or our line project at the very beginning of the semester, you kind of have to tap that yarn on there and you do get a little messy and that's okay. There's that. I'm going to cut it off. All right. And I think I'm going to do the same thing at the top on all of my pads. So I'm going to turn my plate and I think I'm going to do the same thing. Hopefully, my glue bottle cooperates. Remember, you kind of want to get a nice, even, thick line of glue because. You really want that yarn to stick, especially if we're going to ink it and stamp it. You don't want that yarn falling off. That would not be good. Okay, so I'm going to do my pad. Okay, cut it off. You can press it down a little bit more if you want to make sure it sticks. Okay, I'm going to pause this for just a minute and I'll come back when I have all of those finished. All right, now that I have all of that done, we're going to start by creating textures inside of the pads of our paw print. So everyone is creating a paw print. That is a non-negotiable. But what you do for your designs with your yarn and your bubble wrap is totally up to you. Um, I do want to say that it kind of makes it more fun and creative if you do different things inside of each one instead of doing the same thing over and over or if you just do something really simple. Part of your grade is going to be on your creativity and how you create your polygraph plate. So I'm just going to kind of mess around here and do a couple pads and when I'm done I'll come back and show you how that looks. Okay so I finished the bottom pad of my paw print and I just kind of wanted to walk you through what I did before I finished. So, as you can see, I used all the materials. I used bubble wrap, I used tag board, and I used yarn. And how it's going to turn out, I have no idea. That's kind of the fun part about print making. You really don't know how it's going to turn out until it's all done. So, what I did first is I put the bubble wrap on the bottom. And the reason I did that is because the edges of bubble wrap kind of tend to be pretty messy. So, I wanted to cover them up. So, I glued this piece first. And then I glued this piece, and then I started with this long piece of tag board in this kind of, I don't know, wavy shape, and I kind of just went from there. Um, and so then I built up the tag board, and then I did some yarn, and then I just kind of kept building layers and filling in where I needed. Once I was finished, I noticed that there were some blank areas, so I added this triangle, this triangle, and this triangle, kind of just to add some more interest at the top. And now it's all going to dry, and I can... The only thing I'm going to say is, is that when you're making this, there's a couple things you really want to think about. One, did you fill up all of the space? Or is there a big gap where there's just nothing interesting going on? 
Two, do you have different types of things going on? Meaning, are you not only using all of the materials, but are you using them in different ways? Like, are you cutting the tag board into different shapes? Or are you just cutting a square or a straight line and that's boring? Are you adding things in different directions? Are you cutting them and adding them in ways that are making it look clean? So like when I added the yarn, I cut it to fit to this space. When I cut this tag board, I made sure that it fit inside of my outline so that when I print it, it still gives the illusion that it's a paw print, right? So you need to be clean, your shapes need to be nice, and then the last thing is, is that you need to get everything to lay as flat as you possibly can. Now, while it's drying, that's a little difficult and your hands are gonna get it really gluey. I get it, it's just kind of what happens when you do this. But you need to really make sure that things are getting glued down well and that they're getting pressed down and flattened to your surface, all right? So now I'm gonna work on each of the pads and we'll check back when I'm done with those. Okay, so I just started the pads, but I wanted to show you what I did first so that you could kind of get a step-by-step -step idea of what I've been doing. So I started with bubble wrap first, and I kind of decided that I wanted them to kind of mirror each other, meaning I wanted them to look similar. So I wanted the two on the ends to look similar and then the two in the middle to look similar. So I cut a piece of bubble wrap to fit this, this half over here. I cut a piece of bubble wrap to fit this piece over here, and then I'm gonna add some more stuff on top over there, okay? And then on these two in the middle, I added a little piece on the top and a little piece on the bottom. So now I'm gonna go in with the tag board and the yarn, and I'm gonna finish my designs. So we'll check back in a minute. All right, so I finished what I think is my next layer. I did my yarn, and I kinda did the same thing again where I kinda wanted it to mirror itself, so on this side, I kind of outlined the bubble wrap and I did a curvy line and then I did the same thing on this side, but I did a zigzag line and then I did some kind of pointed lines on this side to outline the bubble wrap and I did some curvy lines on this side to outline the bubble wrap. So I'm going to finish it up, I think, with some little tag board shapes, I think. I don't know. I'm kind of still playing around with it, but I'll show you the finished product in just a minute. Okay, so I think I have finished my plate. I added some um, tag board triangles right here and then I went ahead and added another piece of yarn right here to fill up that gap. Over here I kind of layered some tag board pieces on top of each other. I know it's kind of hard for you to see. And then I added another piece of yarn along here. And then I added a tag board circle right here and a tag board square right here. All right, so my plate is done. Uh, I think I'm going to just cut off part right here since I don't really need that it doesn't have to be straight okay now we have to let this dry and then hopefully flatten up a little bit as it's drying but it has to dry completely obviously before we can ink it but we're gonna make a second um, color graph in just a moment but this is our finished paw print one so I will set it aside and then I'll show you how we're gonna start our second one all right, so for our last holograph print, we're gonna create a word. And you can create one of three words, okay? So I'm gonna write them on this piece of tag board for you. You can create the words MMS, okay? Easy, right? You can create the word hashtag, MMS proud, or you can create the word bullpups. Now, I'm gonna let you decide how you do this. So obviously, that word is easier than the other two, right? These two are about the same length. That's eight letters. That's nine, and obviously that's three, okay? So, totally up to you. Um, I think for this example, I'm just going to do MMS, but I'm going to do better in a way that will show you how you could do yours, okay? So, the first way you could do this letter is to draw one and cut it out. Now, do all of the letters need to be in the same style or font? Absolutely not, okay? So, I'm going to sketch out my first <clears throat> I'm going to sketch out my first letter <clears throat> on my piece of cardboard. Ooh. Ooh, don't know what happened to my voice there. Okay, so I'm going to sketch out my letter here. And then I'm actually going to cut it out, okay? So I'm going to cut out my letter. 
Now this is a thick piece of cardboard, so. And on each of your letters, I want you to play around with techniques too, you know? I mean, have fun, be creative. Now, do you have to cut out all your letters? No, you do not. I'm just trying to show you a variety of techniques that you can use. Okay, so I'm cutting out this one. All right. And then I'm going to decide if I like that shape. I think it looks okay. I might trim a little bit off this side. Okay, I like that letter. All right, there's my M for MMS. What I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to do a technique where you kind of peel the top layer of the cardboard off. So you have to be a little careful that you don't ruin the cardboard completely. But if you peel off the top layer of the cardboard, you get this cool texture underneath. So I'm going to use my fingernails and I'm going to peel off this top layer. And of course it's not going to work while we're doing the video, right? Okay, there we go. So you can see I kind of started to get it right there. Can you see that just a little bit? See how it's kind of textured? So I'm going to pause this and I'm going to work on peeling that off and I'll come back when it's all done. Okay, so I got some of that peeled off and I just kind of wanted to show you what it looks like. So I didn't get it peeled off everywhere. I actually just cut my fingernails. I don't have any, but it leaves this cool texture behind. And I think I'm actually going to leave this letter like this. I really like how it's rough in some areas and not in some other. And that will be my M. So that's one technique that you can do, okay? So now we're going to do our second M for MMS. And I'm going to draw it out. Okay. And now the other way that you can do this is you can obviously just build on top of it like we did with our other one. So you could either cut it out or you could just leave it. I'm going to just leave it for right now, but I'm just going to separate it. So I'm just going to cut out that piece. I'm going to maybe cut out that piece. Now you can start by peeling off a little bit and then going back and um, adding more on top. It's kind of whatever you want to do. I think I'm just going to um, glue some different stuff on top and then see how I like it from there. I'm actually going to cut the edges, I think, so that if anything hangs off the edge, I can just cut it off really easily. So, I mean, you can do the same thing again, where you just kind of add some shapes in, right? But it's important that you have that edge. So if I were going to glue this here, so say I'm going to glue this on here. Okay. Then it's important that we keep the shape of the letter. So I could glue it, but then I would need to trim off whatever's extra. Okay. And that might be easier to do after it's dry. So I'm going to do it right now so you guys can see for the video. Okay, so when I stamp it, you'll still be able to tell that that's a letter M because um, the shape of it is still there, right? Okay, so that's just kind of adding, like building up some more texture. So I'm just going to keep going with that. And I'm just using my thin tag board again that I've been using before. And I'm just kind of I don't know, going with the flow and seeing what happens. That's kind of the fun part about calligraphy is there's no right or wrong way to do this and it kind of just happens. And if you don't like it, then you can kind of just build over it or take it off and see what you do like. That's kind of the fun part about this. So, so I'm going to add one more in the middle. And then I'll cut out those middle parts. And now I think I'm going to cut out the middle part of the M. Now, if I were doing this 
not quickly in a video, I would probably have waited until this was dry so it was easier to cut. And I'm trying to do this quickly so that you guys can kind of just see the process of what I'm doing. Okay, so you can kind of see how I'm building up. So just for the purpose of this video, let's say that I'm done with this M. So here's my M and my second M. Now I could even be like, oh, that this one's like way taller than my next one. Maybe I want to trim it down a little bit. Okay, so there's my M, M. And then I'm going to make an S and I'll come back and show you when I'm all done. Okay, I'm all done with my word MMS. I will cut this one out a little bit more maybe when it's all dry, but for now I'm just going to leave it. So. The first one, I just tore off some of the cardboard layers and left this texture underneath. The second one, I built on top of some tag board. I did go back in and add a little bit more. And then the last one, I just kind of outlined with yarn, which I kind of really like because it looks like a balloon or like a neon sign. So we are now done creating our calligraphy plates. These three little ones can go in your bin to dry. The big one is going to need to go on the drying rack to dry, so it's really important that you have your name on it. And we will talk about how we're going to print these. Um, in our next class period. So today, here's what you need to do. You're going to create a collagraph paw print using tag board and yarn and bubble wrap if you choose to. You're in, then you're going to create a collagraph text piece using tag board and cardboard and yarn and bubble wrap if you choose to, okay? So obviously you're probably not gonna get done today. And that's totally fine, but here's my example again, and here it is big for you. Um, Really take your time and have fun with this. Really play on manipulating the um, materials that you have and experimenting. And um, if we need more time than two days on this, then I will give you more time, but kind of plan for having two days to get this done.